What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Welcome, everyone, and hello, hello to you all. It's so nice to be here with you again. You know, as I keep saying, Wednesdays are my favorite day. It is such a joy to show up here with you and with my producer and all of my angels and guides and everybody that shows up all at the same time. And to just have, well, it's not quite an hour, 55 minutes together where we can just authentically share. I can be truly who I am. You can sit and listen and be in that space of who you are as well. And together, by the end of the show, maybe we both, maybe all of us have a new perspective on something. This whole idea of challenging you really for some cases and at certain for certain topics is is really challenge you to look at something from a new perspective. If we're not willing to look at something even just the tiniest bit differently than how we look at it now, then we really stay stuck. And if you are having difficulties in any way with any emotional or mental health or, I don't know, maybe just a prolonged period of some sadness right now or whatever it might be, anything that's not feeling really good, uplifting and makes you like just so happy to move to the next part of your day, then to change that, something needs to change within us. And that's going to be a big, big part of what we're going to talk about today. So for those of you who may be brand new, my name is Karen Leslie, and I'm your host here for the next little while on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And we're here on the Inspired Choices Network, a great platform for you to show up and find hosts that will talk about all kinds of different topics for you. We really have quite a robust set of um, hosts right now, which is really cool. So for myself, you know, the title of today's show is like, no, with an exclamation mark after it, to reinventing yourself. So a couple of questions for you. You know, how many of you have actually thought, ooh, you know, I really wish that I could just reinvent this part of me? Or, or maybe me in total, like, you know, do you just want to start from scratch and create this person that may be very different than how you're feeling in this exact moment? You may be thinking that there's parts of you that aren't okay. You might even use the word wrong. Some people use the word broken. I really, really dislike that. Um, I don't think any of us are broken. You may have a part in your body, like a bone, that might be broken due to an accident or whatever. But you, you as a being, you as a human being, as a spiritual being, you are not broken. There may be aspects to you you might wish to change. That's fine. But I really, I yeah, uh, it's one of my soapbox things. Nobody's broken. You you definitely aren't. And so with this idea of, you know, no, don't reinvent yourself, even though you've had these thoughts. I really want to bring to you a different perspective of this whole idea. And it's an idea I think that many people have and possibly have multiple times throughout their life. Perhaps you're not happy with the job you have. So you might want to, you know, what if I could just sort of reinvent how I present myself in an interview so I could get a different type of job or reinvent who I am by taking courses or doing areas of study. 
great. You, you know, always wonderful to gather more knowledge, more understanding of things, to expand something you're interested in. You know, the, the mind, the conscious mind loves to learn new things. It really does. So working with that is fabulous. I'm a constant seeker of new information and knowledge. I love it. However, I don't seek new information and I don't wish you to be seeking new information or education from the perspective of reinventing you. You know, the idea of expanding ourselves by learning new things is that to expand who you are, to give you new perspectives, to give you a new opportunity to see something differently, to experience something that you haven't experienced before. But it's not to change you. I look at it to, to enhance you, to empower you, to Add into what you already have, but not to change, not to take away an area that you feel isn't good enough. And, and really, that's what we come down to. We're feeling that some part of us is not good enough, not up to par, you know, and you may have actual evidence of that from comments from people or your own personal experiences that you're saying, but this isn't okay. I can't do this well. But that doesn't mean that having that perspective to reinvent yourself will actually work. That may sound really strange, but I over the course of the show, I hope to show you that reinventing yourself, it's not possible. Okay, spoiler alert, but don't leave because there's a lot I want to share with you, even though I've said that now. It really is. It, it is not something that you can actually do in this moment. No. It's a trap we get caught into thinking that we can just re invent an aspect of ourselves. It really is a trap. It will lead you into feeling more dissatisfied with whatever the reasons are that you thought reinvention was a good idea. It, keep, it will keep you feeling the way you do right now. And then it will give you more evidence that this isn't changing. This pattern will not give you the attributes, the skill set, the way of thinking, whatever it might be, a new artistic ability, whatever it is. It, that way of thinking to reinvent yourself will not give it to you. You know, we often think, especially if we want to like change careers or change the area of work that we're doing, you perhaps let's say let's say you've got a desk job, um, you know more of a standard nine to five kind of position, and maybe you're getting bored with it, and so you think, okay, so what would I love to do? And you know I like to ask that question, what would I love to do? And then you get an idea of, you know, I love working with my hands, I love wood, so what if I could go into woodworking or the artisan side of that and create pieces of art with wood. Fabulous idea. But I'm going to caution you. Don't then go into thinking, so how do I reinvent me or reinvent my skill sets or reinvent my whatever it's going to be, whatever comes to mind, so that I can do that. It really is going to be very difficult. It is going to be close to, if not impossible, without looking at things from the perspectives that I'm going to share with you today. Getting through that process in the way that you may be thinking about it will be difficult. 
You may be thinking right now, yeah, but things are already difficult. That's why, Karen, I want to reinvent things. It's going to get worse. It really will. You will have greater sense of dissatisfaction. You will have perhaps a greater uh, list of things to be judgmental about from who you are, for who you are and what's going on in your life. To think that your life will get easier if you could reinvent a part of you. You know, if you could, uh, let's say, reinvent how you communicate with people. That's a good one. So that you can find a new group of people to be with. Or find a special someone that maybe is absent in your life right now. So if I could just reinvent how to talk to people, how to connect with them, then I could have that person pop into my life. Chances are you're just going to be inviting in the same type of person into your life that isn't whom you choose to have now. It's not the person that you wish to have. Reinvention? Let's go to the etymology of that. I usually do it a little later. But I looked up reinvent in you know my favorite site. And it says invent again or anew. And that was from the 1680s. So not super long ago from the perspective of a lot of the etymology um, information. It says to devise or create anew without knowledge of a previous invention. So you could be making something that already exists. You're just unaware of that. That could be fine if you think, oh, I'm going to make a toaster, and then you realize somebody else has already invented a toaster. But if you're looking to reinvent part of you, then it is your perception of not recognizing that it already exists that is the problem. And then there's um, a, a common phrase, very popular, like don't reinvent the wheel, meaning sort of if it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it sort of idea. But, you know, to reinvent the wheel means to be redundant, to do redundant work. So do you kind of get a sense of the energy of the word reinvent? It really does not have that space of creating something brand new. It doesn't have the energy of innovation, that creativity, that inspiring aha moments of something that you have not encountered before. Reinvention is not innovation. So if you're looking to present yourself in a different way, innovation would be a more appropriate word. We'll get into how to do all that. We really will. We'll get there. So the idea of wanting to reinvent you based on this definition means you're just going to recreate you. The task will be redundant. Sounds a little harsh, but that is the energy of the word. Now, yes, right? Some of you may be thinking, but Karen, you always look at two sides of the coin. So this one side is like, okay, it is all just redundant. It's doing the same thing again. It's duplicating something. Correct. So what could be on the other side? And honestly, truthfully, I hadn't thought about this until right now. So on the other side of this, then, because to look at the other side, we have to change our perception. We have to look at it differently. Then, and only then, will you have the ability to see how something can change. You got the idea already on the one side as to what needs to be changed. However, you're going to be recreating that. So when you look at the other side of the coin and you look from a new perspective, then you will be able to gain a new way of seeing something. You may look at an attribute within yourself and get a glimpse or an aha of 
oh, maybe I don't actually wish to be like this or look at something in this way anymore. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to go for our first break. I'm going to leave you kind of hanging on that idea. Think about this. Reinvent redundant behavior, just creating what was there before. Or are you open to having a slightly different perspective? Are you open to a possibility or an idea coming forward to you just for you, for something to be created that's not a reinvention. It is a new creation. Some idea to think about. We're going to hash that over a little bit more as we go along through the show. Thank you for being here with me. As I mentioned earlier, we're on the Inspired Choices Network. Feel free to send me an email. I would love to hear from you if you have any questions or anything. You can write to me at karen at karenlesley.ca, and Leslie is L-E-S-L-I-E. -E. All right, don't go away. We're going to uh, look at how to move forward with this idea and get a greater understanding of what's in the way, truly, of shifting things around as to how we can look at ourselves to achieve what it is we would like to be creating in our life. All right, we'll be right back, everyone. Don't go away. There's so much more to talk about. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. So, no to reinventing yourself. Absolutely. Capital letters, N-O. It's not going to work, as I was saying. It's not going to give you what you're seeking. No matter how you look at this, truly, no matter how you frame this, reinventing is taking something that already exists and just making it again. Inventing, and then you've got the word re, means like to redo, recreate, reproduce. Yet we'll think, if I could just change this aspect of myself, if I could just sort of reinvent how I show up, or recreate who I am, or re-something, anytime that those two letters, R-E, are in front of a word, you are not getting brand new. You are not going to receive what's probably in your heart that you would like. Reinventing. Mm -mm, not the way to go. So what do we do? Let's flip this. Let's make it more positive. All right. So can you change who you are? Ah, 
Absolutely. You definitely can. You may have a bit of a mindset problem at the moment, imagining that or seeing what that might look like. That doesn't matter. It truly does not matter in this moment. Those of you who have been following me, you know, for, oh gosh, we're coming up pretty close to a year and a half here now, but for a while, or know me personally, or been following me on all the different social media platforms, you will know to a degree the vast changes that have happened for me. And in particular, in the last couple of years, and then even the last number of weeks, like I am constantly changing. I am not reinventing myself, but I am changing. I am evolving. I am becoming different from two perspectives, my own, how I see myself, and then also how you, how others see me as well is starting to change again. Now, how other people see you can change quickly if how you present yourself is dr dramatically different, but that often comes from something physical that they witness or see with you. When it's a change within how you are seeing yourself and how you are presenting who you are, often it's a little more gradual. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have a change just in a heartbeat and have this like miraculous shift within you that is life-changing. It happens, it does. Don't ever believe it can't. But what's more common is that it's a little more gradual. And the reason for that is you may have that lightning bolt thought and you're just like, yes, okay, if I do this or if I be this and you get all excited and you see all the possibilities, they just start lining up in front of you. You've got so many ideas coming into your head and it's like, yes. Now to bring that into your reality, that's where it can take more time. The reason being to get that, that thought, that emotion, and have it translate out into the physical world means you have some work to do. And that work is getting rid of all of the yeah buts that will surface just as quickly. It's going inside and finding the reasons why you can't do that or why you think that's not possible, allowing them to bubble up to the surface. Like, really, don't worry about it. Let them come up. And then finding that courage and strength within you to really look at them. What is the reason you're holding on to that belief or that judgment or that thought? Like, truthfully, what is it? How is this helping you saying you can't do that? What are you afraid of? What fears are starting to bubble up to the surface? What past experience is now coming back through the memory banks and going, oh yeah, I remember when I tried something similar. Ooh, yeah, that didn't work out very well. So you are going to have the actual cells in your body the chemistry in your body and your memories all coming forward saying, um, don't think this is going to work. I don't think this is a good idea. Yet you were so excited. So when that happens, allow yourself, give yourself permission, go back into that initial thought and recreate that sense of, oh my gosh, this will be so amazing. Let those emotions come in. Let the body do what it does and does brilliantly with creating those chemical responses and all of these different changes within you. And when you get really excited and really just like happy about this, then you're going to have these hormones being released. You've got dopamine coming in. You've got things arriving saying, yes. And hold on to that. Be with that. Feel it. Know what that feels like. So that you can reproduce it. You can bring it back. 
when we do this, we start to open up the doors to what is behind the thought that we want to reinvent something about ourselves. It's old ways of thinking. It's old programming. It's old beliefs that are no longer helping you. They're keeping you where you are. And until we address those, you're not going to be able to create new. You are not going to have the ability for innovation. When someone gets struck with that desire and process and they see things just line up for innovation, for real creation and invention of something brand new, This all arrives because there was that window, a little glimpse that they allowed to be open that gave the universe an opportunity to funnel those ideas into you. You let your guard down, so to speak. You dropped a belief or you lifted up an energy within you like, I wonder. I wonder what else is possible. And then... It all starts to come in. We have everything that's around us because somebody was in that space and created what is in the room you're in right now. To do that for ourselves is no different, but we fight it more. We make it harder. We resist looking at ourselves from that space of innovation, creation. Instead, we we start to try and change something based on the current model we have, and it gives us more of the same. Our thoughts and our beliefs are our building blocks. They're the foundation of everything we do. To build something new, you can't just take those blocks paint them a different color, and then start building again. They're the same blocks. The material that makes them up is identical. The color's different, but that's it. So instead of a red house, you've got a gray house, or you've got you know, a, a wooden house. But the foundation for putting them all together is the same. We need to go within. Aside from the idea that you need to go within to let go of the thoughts and beliefs that are in your way, there's gold in there too. We need to go within. Yes, we got to build those, get rid of those building blocks. We've got to actually take them apart. And then toss them out and have that space, that opening for the new to be given to you. To be in that space, as I described just a few minutes ago, of like, oh, wow, you get that aha. And you think, yes, I would love to do that. Wow. Or you get this like thought, I think I really am like that. I think that is part of who I am. And it can be shocking and surprising. You might laugh or you might retreat because you haven't allowed yourself to see it because it's been buried so deep. I've told this story a couple of times before, a long time ago, um, uh, around 2008, I believe. So we're 2024 now. So yeah, a long time ago, I was sitting at the dinner table with my family and somebody said something and I laughed out loud and I startled myself. Like I literally, like I had a bit of like a, a gasp and I, I looked around the table. I felt like I'd done something wrong. I laughed louder than I had heard myself laugh before. So prior to that moment, when I laughed, it was 
It was quiet. It was controlled. It was monitored. It was, in my opinion, an acceptable laugh to have for whatever the reasons. And then this one popped out and it shocked me. And I went immediately to look at the people around my table to see, had I done something wrong? What's their response? Is it negative? Are they looking at me strange? And it actually really and truly almost brought me to tears. I wanted to cry. It was so uncomfortable. It took me years to understand what happened in that moment, which is why I'm sharing it with you now so that you don't have to wait for years, decades, right? Had I known back then in 2008 what I know today, sure, I would have probably still been surprised, heard my voice, heard that laugh and, and went, whoa. But I would have then gone into, well, that's cool. That's new. How do I feel about that? Would I like to do that again? See, I found a part of me that I had hidden and didn't know was there. Yes, I knew I could laugh, but not from the core of me and not without having restrictions around it. Like it was just a spontaneous laugh. That's been in me all my life. It's never not been there, but I had just found it. And then I kind of, I buried it again for a long time. It was too uncomfortable. So all of those aspects of you that you think need to be changed, they're in place based on building blocks that are holding them there that can be removed. And then you really start to see all of these amazing traits and possibilities and aspects of you that have just been hidden. That's all. If you can think about that, we're going to go for our second break. And we're going to delve into this more when we come back. And how then to dig down a little deeper. And when you find it, what can you do with it? How can this be an amazing opportunity for you? Right. We will be back very shortly. Thank you for being here with me on the Inspired Choices Network. I love having you here with me every week. And we have so much more to get through on the next segment. So I'm going to stop talking and I will see you in just a couple of minutes. All right. Don't go away. <laughs> We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. 
Welcome back, everybody. So let's jump right in. No to reinventing you. I think you've got that. I'm sure by now you understand the reasons for that. However, there's still some things about you you would love to change. Like, like I mentioned in the previous segment, I really wanted to learn to be comfortable with the sound of my voice and laughing. Could you imagine trying to do a podcast and not wanting to hear the sound of your voice? To not allowing yourself or myself here to have the emotions that I have when I'm here with you? You know, I've laughed, I've made mistakes, I've done things, and it's all fine. And it's all in the moment to still be that very controlled person, I think, would really be taking away from what it is I want to bring to you every week. So that laugh, it was in me. It's been in me all my life. Maybe I had it when I was younger. I don't know. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. What it is, though, is knowing now that I found it, it's there. And what do I want to do with this? Well, experience it. Enhance it, maybe. I mean, what if I wanted to be a stand-up comedian? And then I found I could laugh. Like, holy moly. Like, that would have been really cool. But if I didn't know I could do that, because if I felt I couldn't laugh and I had no humor, how would I be able to find it? For you to laugh. I do tell jokes more often than I used to. It does surprise my voice. <laughs> but it's all good. Right? So everything is inside you now. 100% of all of these things you would like to be. All of these attributes you would love to have. Come to the surface. And for you to be able to show them and present them to the world. It is there. It is all there. Would you like to find them? I'm still finding new bits. We are so complicated. We have so much that makes up who we are that I don't know if we would ever find all of the different parts of ourselves and all of these different bits. And to me, that is like so exciting. You will never get bored with figuring out new things about yourself. You will never have to have that idea of reinventing. Allow yourself to see who you are and emerge and be. Now, I've mentioned to get there, you have to do the inner work, the shadow work. A lot of you know how to do that. You've heard me talk about it. I'm not going to go into great detail about that in this show. If you want help, get in touch with me. All right. We can work together. Absolutely. Or you can go back and find other um, podcasts that I've done, like one on conflict would be a good one. You know, um, changing different belief patterns. There's a lot of them there. I mean, I don't know. I'm probably pretty close to like 75 shows or something now. So there's ones you can go back to and look at. But let's look here and say, okay, so yes, I know that there's that work, but what's what's the prize at the end? Why would I want to do that work? Well, the prize is you really get to know who you are authentically, truly, and from the perspective of no judgment, of being neutral, and just observing and then like looking at each thing that comes up and going, wow, what would I like to do with this? How does this make me feel? How can this be a contribution to what I would like to have in my life? If you find you're actually a great conversationalist, going back to what we talked about in relationships at the beginning of the show, but you never allowed yourself to actually explore that, imagine all of that social anxiety of not knowing what to say to somebody or feeling you had nothing of value to say to someone. 
that can all go away. And you can become a fabulous conversationalist. You can become so interesting to talk to. And you can become so interested in other people and talking to them and learning about them because of this new side of you that you just found that you actually like to talk. And you're really great at having conversations. The impact, it may sound simple, but the impact can be life-changing for you. So what are you prepared to go digging for? I don't want you to go digging with an agenda. I don't want you to say, ah, I want to be specifically ABC. The best approach for this is we get rid of the old building blocks that have been hiding everything and keeping those doors locked and then allowing ourselves to be present and seeing what opens up for us. And you have the choice to say, oh, no, not now. I don't want to work with that. That's okay. That can stay over there. That's fine. That's cool. You now have the awareness that that exists as part of you. And you can work with it if you choose at a later time. And so just like, okay, so what else? I wonder what else. Ask, show me. Show me skills that I have that I didn't know existed. Show me parts of my personality that I have been afraid to see. And don't go into the house. Don't let those yeah butts come in. Just be that little kid that's really curious about something. Say, show me. I would love to know. And then when one triggers that feeling inside you that I asked you to know about an experience earlier, right? That that moment of like, oh, wow, that's cool. And you feel the emotions in you and you feel that intrigue and you go, all right, this, this, I'll have more of this. What do I need to do? Some of it might be hiring a coach. It truly might be. And some of it may be giving yourself permission to have a new experience that relates to that. So you can look at it again from a, a wider perspective and gain a new understanding with it because you're experiencing something with it. You may wish, I mean, truly, work with me. You can. I have a brand new program and you can work with me for four months. Um, sign up for a four month period. And it has tremendous benefits to getting you to this space. We will have weekly calls for the first month. And then we're going to have two calls a month after that and time with me and resources and just all kinds of things. But commit to four months to giving yourself that opportunity to see who has been pushed to the side that is so waiting to come forward and help you create this new way of being and living. This all started by you wanting to think, oh, if I could just reinvent this part of me because there's something in you is not what you want it to be. It's not giving you the life and showing you what it is you would like to have, right? Because who you are in the inside reflects in your outer world. So let's break that down. Let's get those old beliefs out of the way. Create that space to see what's underneath. And then grab hold and allow yourself, give yourself permission to experience these new sides of you. Will some of it be uncomfortable? Likely. Will some of it be amazing? Yeah, likely. It's your choice. What would you like to have? Who would you like to be? And what do you need to do to be that person? If you have any thoughts of wishing to be someone you're not in this moment, right? You, If you are 100% cool, great, nothing could get better. 
then this isn't for you. And amazing, like absolutely amazing that you're in that space. But there's so few of us that are. I love where I am, but I want more. So I'm going to go after it. What about you? We are at our final break. So it's a really short one. I'm going to do my best to wrap all of this up for you when we come back. So don't go away, but maybe ask yourself that question while we're on the break. Do I want more or do I want to have something different? And I know the word wants, not ideal. But in this moment, it's okay. Take whatever word comes to you and see, is there something else you would like to have in your life? And to have that, it comes down to you and who you are being in order for it to materialize into your world. All right, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, very short break here, and then we will figure all this out in the next segment. All right, don't go away, everyone. We won't be back. I won't, we won't be back. We won't be long. Okay. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Okay, so I so wanted to laugh before we went for the break when I said we won't be back, but I couldn't. So there are times maybe where it's not going to be appropriate to laugh because it wouldn't have been a good idea to have really laughed loud <laughs> over top of the uh, commercials that were coming through. But anyways, I, I was wrong. We're back. I'm here. I am really so involved in this conversation today and you've probably picked up on it and you can hear that my wording has been off and that there's so much coming through because I am so passionate about this it's really hit home all of these beautiful things that you aspire to every single one of them everyone is inside you it's a question of are you willing to go looking are you willing to let go of the way you've been living? And that's what it comes down to, really. All of these thoughts that's led you to live the way you're currently living, which has given you everything that's around you. Truly, it, it's given you the car if you've got one. It's given you the tent if you own one. It's given you the shoes that you have. It's all based on how you've been living and the thought processes that you have, that you keep working with. So if there's anything there that you wish to change, then how, how you look at it and who you are within you, that's where you have to go to. You may think, yeah, but I've got the money. I could just use my money in a different way and get what I want. That is true. You could. How you will feel about that down the road will likely be the same as how you're feeling about other things right now. That choice may not be coming from inside, from that true authentic of who you are being or who you can be to create something new for you. It's not a matter of reallocating and just shifting things over, moving something to the side. It's a matter of dropping this way of being and allowing yourself to look inside past the fears, 
past the doubts, past all those judgments, get rid of them all and see these other aspects of yourself. See what would make you laugh if you're like me and that wasn't part of you. See what makes your heart sing. See that job that you would love to have. And you envision and you become that person who has what it is that you desire. It sounds simple. And truthfully, the steps are simple. They really are. That does not mean that it's easy. It does require effort. It requires you to be very present. Autopilot, mm -mm, not part of this game, no. Autopilot is reinventing. Autopilot is redundant. It is doing the same thing over again. You will not get to where you would like to be on autopilot. It's just not going to be there for you. Getting into these spaces and creating this life that you would like to have can require that you look at yourself in a new perspective from new angles, new ways. And that can take some courage. That can take you being a little more vulnerable with who you are. Um, it can require some strength that maybe you don't think you have right now. The fact that you're thinking about it and you think, well, other people have that strength, but I don't. Ooh, I wish I did. Guess what? Those thoughts are telling you that you have that within you. Everything is within you. And so we're going to follow up with this next week. The show next week is called Growing Your Inner Confidence. Helping you to move forward. Helping you to step into those awarenesses with a new way of looking at them. From a new perspective that will allow you to embrace them. Like I embraced laughing. Growing that inner confidence within you. So please join us next week as we carry on on this really important conversation. All that you desire is available, as strange as that may sound to you right now. But it is. The world is fully abundant. It's that we have these blinkers on based on our beliefs and things and our autopilot thinking that makes it difficult for us to see what is truly available. Whatever your reasons are, they really don't matter in this moment. What I would like you to have is that understanding that we've put ourselves in this space and place right now. If you choose to change it. Then when you do some of the digging and you're getting rid of those building blocks, yeah, then you can have a better understanding and look at what it is that's holding those in place. And that's really valuable work. When you move that out, you create that space for that aha moments to come in, for those new ideas and for aspects of you to just surface. And people may like, wow, you seem different, but you look the same, but you feel different. Your energy is different. You don't seem as tired or fatigued anymore. Life seems to be really doing well for you. Or some people say things like, life look, looks good on you. Right? <laughs> However, that's going to be. Because it's you that has come to the party. Not a reinvention not an autopilot, but you. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. 
Until next Wednesday, Garrett is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.